Good afternoon, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Drive Time, a virtual music quiz show presented by 91.3 WYEP. Now, please welcome the host of Drive Time, Joey Spiha. Good afternoon, and welcome to Drive Time, WYEP's music quiz show. I'm your host, Joey Spiha, and let's welcome our contestants for today. From Mount Washington, we have Kristen battling Ryan, who resides in Upper St. Clair. Welcome to the show, and thanks for being brave. I think it's going to be fun. Wait, I'm ready. Are you, Ryan? Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, well, we will start the game with a series of classic album covers. All you have to do is take a look and guess what the album is. Each correct answer in this round is worth one point, and if you like what you see, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe below. Now, Kristen won the coin toss before the show, so she will start with the first question. Kristen, take a look at this. That's Queen. Um, I don't know the name of the album, though. It's the one with Bohemian Rhapsody on it. <laughs> well, if you don't know the name of the album, I got to give Ryan a shot at it. Well, Ryan's making a face he definitely knows. No, no, no. I was going to guess that the album was called Bohemian Rhapsody. I actually don't know. All right. Well, how about I give you each one point uh, just to be nice and... You're both wrong. It's Queen 2, their second studio album, which came out in March of 1974. It features the iconic design conceived by Mick Rock, who also designed covers for T-Rex, Joan Jett, and the Talking Heads, to name a few. Now, like you, I also was confused because Bohemian Rhapsody is not on this album, but they did use the artwork for Bohemian Rhapsody, which I think is why people get confused. So that's why... You're both going to get one point for that one. All right, question two goes to Ryan. Take a look at this. I think Kristen has a better shot at this than I do. I, do I definitely know that. All right, what's it going to be then? That's Beyonce Lemonade. It is Beyonce Lemonade, her sixth solo album, which came out in April of 2016 and deals with her emotional journey after her hubby, Jay-Z's infidelity. Question three goes to Kristen first. Take a look at this. I have no idea. Like, I seriously know I have no idea. Ryan? Is that Shaft? It is not Shaft, but you're in the right area. It is James Brown, Black Caesar. Uh, Black Caesar is the soundtrack to a film of the same name, released in 1973, and it also features music from the JBs and Lynn Collins. All right, last question of round one goes to Ryan first. Take a look at this. Well, it's Bob Dylan but what Bob Dylan? My guess is it's from the 80s. No, it's not. Kristen, what do you think? I don't know. Um, I think that was a good guess because of the shirt. Like, it's not freewheeling. It's not blood on the tracks. I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, I like your effort on all of these. So once again, I'm going to give you each a point because I can tell that you love Bob Dylan. This is Highway 61 Revisited, released in the oh, summer of wow. 1965. Uh, Highway 61 Revisited is Judas's, I mean, Bob Dylan's first album to feature rock and roll arrangements. So, at the end of round one, Kristen, you are in the lead with a score of three to two. But hey, anything can happen here on two of those are points. <laughs> two of those are points you gave us, Joey. Hey, we're very generous here at WYEP. So, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. Now, let's take a moment to get to know our contestants. Kristen, you are a novelist, from what I, I understand. Am. Why don't you tell us a little I, bit about your writing? I write historical British romance novels. I have two of those out, both under a pen name. 
And then I also write video games. So I write romance video games with a company called Lovestruck. And then I have my first solo game coming out this year. For oh, how cool. So can I ask which historical figures you have imagined romantically? Oh, imagine romantically. Uh, or who I, you've written about anyway. <laughs> I mean, Aaron Burr was hot. Okay. We all know this. <laughs> we all know this. We all know this. George Washington, no, those teeth were bad. <laughs> well, we'll have to read your books and, and find out. So I don't know about you guys, but I am psyched to play some more Drive Time. Now, round two will test your knowledge of music trivia with a series of multiple choice questions. Each correct answer in this round is worth three points. And Ryan, you are up first. Which charismatic band leader is known to his fans as the boss? Is it Neil Young, Paul Simon, Bruce Springsteen, or Tom Petty? Oh, it's Bruce Springsteen. It is Bruce Springsteen. And the boss got his nickname early in his career when he was playing with the group Earth. Young Bruce was in charge of collecting the band's pay after every show, like a boss. Question two goes to Kristen. The Locomotion was a top three hit three times in three different decades by three different artists. Which artist did not have a hit with the song? Was it Carol King, Little Eva, Grand Funk Railroad, or Kylie Minogue? I think it's Carol King. It is Carol King. Carol King had lots of hits, but that ain't one of them. Little Eva blew the whistle first when she hit number one in 1962. Grand Funk stayed on the tracks in 74 when they topped the charts with it. And Kylie Minogue hit number three with the locomotion in 1988. I'm thinking it's probably time for a reboot. Ryan, question <laughs> three goes to you. ACDC have been paving a highway to hell for us since 1973. In which country were those first foundations poured? Was it Great Britain, the United States of America, Australia, or Germany? Australia. Australia is correct. Formed in Sydney in 1973. This one could be confusing as founders and brothers Malcolm and Angus Young were born in Scotland. All right, last question of the round goes to Kristen. The Simpsons have hosted many music icons in Springfield through the years. Which band made an appearance in the, in the Simpsons movie in 2007? Was it Green Day, The Who, Fish, or Aerosmith? I have no idea. Um, this is probably, everyone knows this, I'm sure. Everyone listening is like, oh my God. Um, I'm gonna go with Fish though. Let's go with Fish. Uh, fish have appeared on The Simpsons, but not in The Simpsons movie. Ryan, what do you think? Um, I'm gonna guess Green Day, but it's a guess. Uh, and it is a great guess. It was Green Day. Now they say you'll never know if you don't ask. So Green Day actually approached The Simpsons creators about appearing in the Springfield-based film in 2007. They also recorded a rock version of the show's theme, which you can hear at the beginning and the end of the movie. Well, after two rounds of play, Ryan is our leader with a score of 11 to six, but that can all change drastically in the final round where each question is worth even more. Oh, Ryan, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, you are a big music fan and we were talking a little bit before the show about our shared appreciation for the Grateful Dead. So I'm always curious among deadheads uh, about favorite eras. And I guess a great way to define that is great is favorite keyboard players. So Ryan, who, who gets your vote? Uh, I mean, I'd have to say Brent is my favorite um, and it's obviously a preference, but you know, they were, they were really strong in the seventies, but Brent's just better than Keith. I, absolutely agree with you the studio albums in the 80s kind of took it in a new direction i feel like built to last is is not really uh regarded well enough you know 
I'm with you, man. I think that Brett brought something to the band that no one else could. And, and a lot of that was his voice. And a lot of that is the songwriting as well. Uh, and this is coming oh, from yeah. a guy who was Team Pigpen for years and years and years. So good to have you on the show. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to see some, some shows this summer. We'll see about yeah. that. Well, here we are at the final round of Drive Time for today. And this is a fun one that will test your ability to recall the lyrics of songs that you've probably heard a million times. I'll read a bit of them and all you have to do is fill in the blank. Each correct answer in this round is worth five points. So pay attention. Kristen, you are up first. Let's see if you can fill in the blank. All right. He say one and one and one is three. Got to be good looking because he's so blank hard to see hard to see is correct it's the beatles come together now this song uh originated from a favor asked of john lennon by timothy leary who wanted to run for office or something and needed a campaign song so it didn't work out the way it hoped but we ended up with a great song regardless question two goes to ryan I backed my car into a cop car the other day. Well, he just blanked. Sometimes life's okay. Um, well, I'm going to have to guess and uh, maybe say shrug. I, I don't know that lyric. Oh, uh, it's not too far off in the sentiment, but the words are wrong. Kristen, what do you think? Laugh. Uh, laughed is also incorrect. It is drove off. I backed my car into a cop car the other day. Well, he just drove off. Sometimes life's okay. It's Float On by Modest Mouse, who were mostly known for their incredibly depressing music before leader Isaac Brock decided to set out to write something catchy. It worked well, helping to break the band into the mainstream in 2004. Question three goes to Kristen. So I turn the radio on, I turn the radio up, and this woman was blank. Singing my song. Singing my song is correct. It's Stay from Lisa Loeb. Uh, that one, I don't even have anything to say about it. It is just <laughs> so much. It's magical. a classic. It's a classic. I love it so much. <laughs> Last question of the game goes to Ryan. Back beats. The word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but you never really blank. Had a doubt. Had a doubt is correct. And of course, we're talking about Wonderwall, a great song from Oasis. And uh, I'll be honest, when I'm on the radio and I play that song, what I like to do each and every time is to talk about something completely different. And then I'll say, anyway, here's Wonderwall. And I make myself laugh every single time. <laughs> so after three rounds of play, uh, we do have a tie. In fact, what? the score, if, if my tallies are correct, we've got a score of 16 to 16. So no clear cut winner yet which means that we get to play the bonus round. And this one is incredibly difficult. Nobody ever gets it right, um, but I, th I think it's fun and maybe you'll win. So this is a multiple choice question and it goes like this. We're thankful for all the support our underwriters have given us through the years. And we've had some long and fruitful relationships with many Pittsburgh companies options used to claim that they were the longest continuing underwriter on the station through their store on east carson street what did they sell what did options sell was it books pets futons or kitchen supplies and uh kristen since you won the coin toss initially you get first stab at the bonus question Oh boy, uh, okay, I get why you said no one's ever gotten this right. I'm just going to guess books. Books is incorrect. Ryan, what do you think? You only got three options left. Um, let's say pets. 
pets. Also, incorrect. I am sorry. Well, the correct answer was actually futons. Yeah, they uh, had a lot of put a lot of people to sleep back in the 90s. Uh, and thanks to Options, a longtime underwriter on WYEP. All right, here comes another bonus question. Ryan, you get to try this one first. WYEP's music director and midday mix host Kyle Smith worked in Burlington, Vermont, uh, not the coat store, and Salt Lake City before landing in Pittsburgh almost 30 years ago. In which state did Kyle's first in which state did Kyle first lend his voice to the airwaves? Was it Florida, Washington, Minnesota, or New York? I'm gonna guess Minnesota. Minnesota is correct. Kyle is a Minnesota native. Uh, he was first on the air at his alma mater, St. Cloud States in the Twin Cities. I think it's in the Twin Cities. Well, that wraps up the game after three rounds, and we have a winner. Congratulations, Ryan. You squeaked it out at the end with a score of 17 to 16. Well done. Well done on both sides. Now, we will be sending you something special from the old prize bag that actually sits under Kyle's desk. So make sure that you're nice to your mail carrier. Thanks again to our contestants, Kristen and Ryan. I want to say thanks to our producer, Nick Wright, and thanks to you for watching and playing along. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe below so that you never, ever miss a new episode of Drive Time. Now, if you didn't know, today is the first day of our spring fun drive. You can help keep me and my fellow DJs on the air and on your screen. We want to keep bringing you the music that matters and the innovative program that fosters music discovery. So donate today at wyep.org or you can call 412-888-0404. Also this week, the Lockdown Countdown 2 continues. Listen at 91.3 FM or stream it on our website at wyep.org, on our smartphone apps, or tell your smart speaker to play WYEP. Check out past episodes of Drive Time and sign up to be a contestant at wyep.org. And from all of us here and at home at WYEP, thanks for joining me. I'm Joey Spihar, and I'll see you next week for another episode of Drive Time.